I have started and stopped and started and stopped this video so many times already. I, I don't know what the problem is. Every time I start a new video, even though I've been doing this for 88, this is number 88 video, I just have issues with my starts of the video. Not my, not my whip starts or whatever, just video starts. So just me, I guess. Anyway, here we go. This is number nine or number 10 of a start. So now you know my secret. It is 71 degrees here in Lehigh, Utah, and that's 21 degrees Celsius. And we're going up to a high of 90 degrees, which is 32 degrees Celsius. Summer has arrived here. Um, going to be hot days. And uh, I'm sure it's that way probably all across the states and, and across the northern hemisphere. So um, we finally have summer has arrived. And um, it's pretty, though. Blue sky, you know, clouds, really nice. But... Um, I'm not a big fan of really hot weather, but that's all right. It doesn't last forever. And I want to say hi to all of you uh, who don't know me. I'm Colette, the Highway Stitcher, if this is your first time here. And I stitch from the highway and at home. I love to travel. And those of you who um, already know that. And um, I'll be doing some traveling uh, plants on this video also, well, where, where I will be heading. But I'm going to move on and we're going to start with whips right away and show you what I've been working on. So, my stitching whips for this last two weeks. There are new, no particular order. This one I picked up first because I was working on this one last, last night with a group of my Utah friends. We get together once a month to stitch. And I decided to bring this Heartstring Samplery Peace Band Sampler. My Peace Band Sampler is um, my birthday piece with a good friend of mine named Krista. We have the same birthday. Um, we do a hashtag Instagram um, cell called OCT29SAL. If anybody else happens to be lucky enough to have our wonderful birthday, which is October 29th, then feel free to join us. Or if you just want to join us anyway because you like what we're stitching, come on and join us, even if your birthday isn't that day. Anyway, this is Peace Band Sampler, and this is um, done in 32 count through the stones uh, fabric. It's a Lugana. It's a Be Stitched Me fabric. And um, kind of like a gray-green color. And um, as you could tell by the bands in this, they're all different, like... Um, stitched bands and the words so of a song and the song is um the peace train song from 1971 by cat stevens so anyway i worked last night on this and uh finished the last half of this one which wasn't completely done and then this one here so i have one more to complete that and then i'll be on going on to another uh words you know another part of the actual song um, I'm doing this two floss threads over two linen threads and uh, I got 204 stitches done last night which is actually pretty good because um, with all our talking and laughing and everything else um, I was kind of surprised when I went home and counted found I gotten that many done that many stitches done um, it is the floss for this is a sulky sulky floss the I'm using one strand of it and it's uh, color number 712 which is like a forest green and um, anyway, I, this, is, this is actually one of my yearly pieces, and it's part of a yearly challenge. And um, we pick three um, pieces to work on, and we uh, do so many stitches and so many times during the month to work on them. Um, we have to mostly make sure that each one is done at least once, and then after that, we have, let's see five more times that we have to just choose whichever the three we want to work on and we decide how many uh, stitches we want to do each time which I've been doing 300. So with that doing those I've been getting quite a few stitches in these three pieces so I've been pretty happy about that. So that's Peace Band Sampler. My next whip that I worked on uh, for a, a, like a daily 30 30 minutes a day stitching, which I try to work on 
for a piece that I kind of want to get consistent work done on it all the time. So for the first five days after I did my last floss tube, I picked up uh, this piece, Mary Angbright to a friend's house. I am working on this um, in a cell with my friend Denise of Black Ribbon Studios. And I did this um, 30 minutes each day for five days and I got, um, oh wow, where is my amount? 564 stitches in those five days. So it's amazing how many you can do, you know, when you just sit there and just do 30, 40 minutes a day of stitching. Here's what mine is looking like. And it looks like I got my thread stuck because I've still got the yellow on here from when I stopped working on it and picked up another daily 30 piece. So now that I've got it back, the now I've got the needle back in without it getting caught on everything there you can see it this is how much i got accomplished um for those five days and it's quite a bit i last time i had um not done home or the house or the and i had not finished down here and all the black around the border so so 564 stitches not bad this is being stitched on 32 count uh, and even weave. It's Salugana white. And I'm using the call for DMCs, except uh, I changed over the blue for the border to the black. Both of us are doing that. And the hashtag for this, uh, those of you who want to join in, you can do any kind of Mary Engelbright cell. And the hashtag is Engelbright Love Cell. And this is two over two. And um, that's, I think that's it. All the call for DMC except for the black, so which I changed. So that's to a friend's house. Okay, my next piece is a full coverage piece. I work on this every month. This is, oh, before I show you that. Here's what it's going to look like when it's finished. This is a lace maker. Uh, the artwork is by Miles Brickett Foster, and it's a artisy design piece. This particular last couple weeks, I got 708 stitches worked on, and I um, pulled it out of the Q snaps and moved over. I had been working on this side. And so I pulled out the Q snaps, moved over to the other side, because it doesn't quite work the length on this. It's easier for me to work on this size of Q snaps. And um, I decided to move my way down here. And um, so as you can see, if you've been watching this, I filled in a lot of this light color for the siding of the um, house, as the house is, is taking more shape. You know, the roof, um, uh, was done and then I thought well I'm gonna move over there and start working on the siding of the house and all this like darker color that I did a little bit to the greens and the browns is um, some of the uh, like plants that are growing the vines that are growing up the side of the uh, the house the cottage I'll show you one more time and then you can kind of get an idea so where I worked was actually right here so see you can see some of the green vine and some of the cream inside of the house and i'm uh, working on this it's a 25 count um even weave lugana that i'm um, greeting myself i i usually do one over one full cross though i have done half stitches before but this time i'm doing one over one, over one full cross with all the dmc called for and um really enjoying this i have about i think i wrote down this time what i've got how much is, did i get of this one thirty eight point zero one is completed on it so thirty eight percent so i'm pretty excited 
I love working on this. It's just such a fun piece to work on. I love me love myself some full coverage. Okay, my next one is also a sell I'm doing with friends. My Home in the Garden by Hello from Ms. Liz Matthews. And I'm doing this one on 32 count um, Be Stitched Me Peanut, which was actually the call for fabric. It's kind of a creamy color. And um, I'm using also the called for flosses, which are Gloriana silks. I'm doing this two over two, full cross. And um, what did I work on? I know that I got 638 stitches, so I probably just worked mainly on the part that I needed to get done for this month, which was this flower here, that big flower there, and then this W I finished up and the border, underline border a little. The colors are so pretty on this with the silks. The next part um, that we're supposed to work on for Sal, because we have like broken it up into sections, is finishing up this. And I'm also going to work down into the border We've been talking about that because there is a lot of stitching here to do with this part as well as the house. So we're trying to keep ahead some so that we don't get caught surprised in October and not be done because October is our, our due date on finishing this. So um, I will be working on that border even though I've finished up the regular part for this month. So beautiful, beautiful piece. Um, we are also doing, this is also a sell. We have a hashtag for an Instagram and it's hashtag garden stitching sell. If anybody wants to join us, feel free to put your pictures down. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to some of the new starts that I did that I mentioned on my last floss tube. Um, the queen, um, of England was celebrating her Platinum Jubilee 70 years of service to the British people and so I thought oh that'd be fun to to work on a, a project that has to do with the Platinum Jubilee so I found one um, that I liked and uh, this is by Tim's Path Samplers and um, it's called the Platinum Jubilee Sampler so I went ahead and I picked this one up and I worked on this um, every day during the Platinum Jubilee and for a couple days after too. So this is what I got done. Cute little teeny 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 weeny stitches and amazingly I was really surprised about this because when I just counted up my stitches just to see what I got done 1,031 stitches. That's better than almost any other um, piece I stitched on this month, other than my next brand new piece that I'll show you. Did get more than this, but this got a lot of stitches in it. I'm doing this one over one on 32 count. Uh, this is like called Fairy Dust. It's a 32 count Belfast Fairy Dust is the name. Fabric linen. And um, I'm working with just 815, DMC 815. I originally was going to use Mrs. Seda silks, which I did want to use, one strand with the over one, but it ended up being too plump. Down there you'll see like some stitching that I did, and I wasn't happy with, with how plump it was. So I had only two choices. I either had to change out my fabric to make the Mrs. Seda silk work, or I had to change out the, the um, floss. And I liked this fabric, and I wanted to work with it with a, a like a red red sampler so I opted to keep the fabric and move over to cotton DMC floss 815 and so I think it's looking pretty good with that it's showing definition good and it's covering it just about right so there's the rose and a crown and a little bit of a border for that 1031 stitches so it was fun to watch um, watch the goings on of the Platinum Jubilee. And we also had a hashtag, um, even though that's over with now, if anybody wants to join in and do it, it was hashtag Platinum Jubilee Cell. 
And I, I'm putting this aside right now because, you know, I have challenge pieces I have to do, but I do like it. It's so much fun to stitch on. So I hope to bring it back out at least for um, any special things with the queen. You know, I could just say, hey, I'm going to bring out my Platinum Jubilee cell and work on it. Okay, my next piece, which I actually did get more stitches on it than anything else this week, was another new start. And um, there was a uh, stitch along that um, was going to be started with some full coverage people. And um, it was uh, Dizzy Stitcher, Darren, and um, Ellie Welly Stitcher. I believe. I'm so bad with names. So I, I apologize if I didn't say it right. Anyway, they decided to start a, a sal with um, a particular designer. They liked his dragons. And so I got excited about it and decided to, to join in. So this is a pain-free crafts pattern. Um, it's Stanley Morrison Designs. He designs dragons and I chose Country Music Dragon. And so I'm joining in with their cell. Their cell is hashtag Stanley's Dragon's Cell. I really got excited about this one. It, 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 it's my heartstrings of country music, which I love. I nicknamed that Dragon Garth after Garth Brooks. And, and so really enjoyed working on this. And I think the reason why I accomplished so much on it was the fact that it was a um, um, one that didn't have tons of confetti on the parts I was working on. So. I'm working on it on a 25 count, um, 25 count even weave Lugana, and this is uh, like a pewter color, so it's like a, a blue, a light blue gray. That way I could do the stitches. There's a lot of blue, blue stitches, and um, you know, I think it'll show up better. It'll be nice, a nice color behind it, a better color behind it. I'm doing one over one full cross, and um, this was just a brand new start. So all of this, the 1,500 and maybe it's more than that, 1,000, yeah, 563 stitches were all done this last week. I'm grading this myself, and uh, it's, it's a DMC, all the call for DMC. So when I showed you that picture, you could tell that those were like curtains behind him. Um, it's always interesting to me how the curtain, I mean, how different things show up different color-wise. The curtains seem so much darker, darker in tones. But with this, there's the dark tones of the blue, but there's also, it lightens up quite a bit in the folds of the of the curtains. My plan on this is, is I'm going to stitch across the top doing the typewriter method where I just pick the next top stitch that hasn't been done and I just stitch down with one thread um, and complete that color and wherever it goes down downwards I just work on it until it's done and then I go back and take the next stitch on the top and then just continue it down with that color. It was easy to do with this because the each color because it's folds of a, of a drapes the curtains they all kind of went down anyway so I could get quite a bit of stitching done and done faster because of um, you know because of how it was set up as far as how it looks. So my plan is to continue that when I work on this again. I'm putting it aside for now. But when I work on it again, I found out that I'm about halfway, a little more than halfway to the middle. So my next plan will be right right here will be about the middle of the piece. So um, I want to get to the middle there. And then I'm going to start working down on the guitar for the dragon. So the guitar and um, his head hopefully. And then eventually I'll go back and work across the top on the curtains. But I want to get a little bit of the fun stuff started working on now. So so that is Garth, my country music dragon. I also did a little bit of work um, this week also on another um, challenge piece and uh, that was Heartstring Samplery, Prairie Life Sampler. This is one of my three for my yearly challenge that where I have to work on several times a month for a total of eight. This one before I did not have the um, that flower or this down here or the start of this flower. 
So that's about 302 stitches. This was kind of um, dragging for a while because the trees, there was a lot of a lot of stitching in the trees, so it was kind of dragging along to me. But now I'm done with the whole um, whole top part. And now I can move on to, to some other sections. As you can see, lots of trees in the cabin for Little House on the Prairie. So what I'm doing is I'm going to move that border down, and then I'm going to start the next section across, which is a lot of the uh, Ingalls family, as you can see like their horses and and the Ingalls family and and um, their dog and so that'll be the next part I work on oh and this is stitched on a 32 count antique white Lugana uh, this was actually a mania start from years ago uh, 2019 and um, so it's being stitched with the over dyes that are called for but uh, fabric I'm not positive I know it's a 32 count linen but uh, I'm guessing from the looks of it it's kind of an antique white or cream color and that's about it on that two over two I'm using two threads and then my last whip is one of my whip go pieces uh, and I'm using I'm uh, doing a sampler whip go this year so I put in samplers that I hadn't worked on for quite a while and one of the Whipco choices was Pandemic. So I picked a Pandemic this week and I got um, 402 stitches so far. I worked towards a thousand stitches in the month for my Whipco, my two Whipco pieces. And what um, I had ended right here on this part before, last, last time I worked on it. So I went from there down to here and worked on that too so my 200 stitches were pretty much all that little section right there i'm stitching this on a 32 count white um wait no it's not 32 i'm talking like my prairie life sampler this is actually a 25 count white lugana and i'm stitching one thread over one floss thread over one linen thread and i'm using mrs seda silks in the colorway darling and so um, it works just perfect on this, on 25 count over one, because the 32 count that I was doing for the Platinum Jubilee, um, the Mrs. Seda Silk was, was too plump and too dense. But for 25 count, you can do one over one, and it's just about perfect. So, so that was a fun stitch. I really got into that. I, I kind of had to do, or I kind of wanted to get some other things worked on and done. But I was having lots of fun with this, so I'll be glad to pick it back up and get more stitches into it. So those were my whips. Um, my haul, I just had a little bit of haul. It was my Bestitch Me fabric for this month, and it is a um, 40 count linen, and it's called Pink Ch Chocolate. So kind of basically what it says. Uh, well, probably I would say more uh, chocolatey with a little bit of tinge of the pink in it. Real pretty color. I do have other haul that, that I picked up to work on for things, but um, um, I don't really want to show it right now because it's some stuff that I'm making for a retreat that I'll tell you about in my plans. And um, I kind of wanted to keep it just not a secret so much as I just didn't want to show it until after I had taken it to the retreat. So um, you, you, if you watch, I'll, I'll post on Instagram. You can kind of see what I what I did there. And if not, when I get back, when I do my next floss tube, you'll be able to see what I did because I'll show you then. So as far as those plans, and um, the major plan is I'll be heading to StitchCon in a week, less than a week. I leave on Tuesday next Tuesday in the morning and fly into Cincinnati and I'll be there until the following Monday so I'll be there a full week less time than we were last year but still enough time to have a, a you know a good time with all of our friends so and my plans in StitchCon actually involve new starts and that generally that's not what I do I usually bring pieces that I want to work on for challenges or pieces that I want to finish 
because last year I was able to do all three days for StitchCon. I was able to go up and ring the bell, and that was fun. But this year, just things kind of fell into place for some um, new starts, sales, things that I suggested to people or that well, I was just talking with friends and they go, oh, whoa, well, let's do that. So um, two out of the three days, I will be doing new starts. Well, so, so we'll see how that works out and see how well I do. Because my mind to me, like, I don't know, with all those people there and everything else, I may not do well on a new start. And because this will be the first time at a retreat that I'll be doing a new start. Every other time I just bring ones that are already worked on and it's easy for me. So we'll see how it works out. <laughs> the first day of it, I'm going to be working on, let's see if I got this right here. I'm going to be starting a cell with Amy of Amy Loves Toads on FlossTube. We're going to be doing this uh, mini heaven and earth design called Singing in the Rain. So I'll be doing that on Thursday, the first day of StitchCon. We are both, both going to be there on StitchCon B. StitchCon A is going on right now as I speak, as I do floss tube. So I hope everybody's having a really good time there for the first group of people. I will be at StitchCon B, and so will Amy. So our plan is to start up this. And we both fell in love with this, those frogs that are singing in the rain, sitting on their, their little, um, little leaves with their pretty flowers. So I'm going to start this. I'll have my um, pattern keeper with me. I generally don't even do that. I tend to not like working on bringing my tech stuff with me and working on full coverage. So I hope this works out fine. It'll be my first time doing it. I picked up, I had some Lugana, um, uh, the gridded kind, the gridded fabric. So I thought, oh, I'm going to go ahead and use my gridded fabric because I know by doing that, I, it'll be less likely for me to make mistakes if I'm gritting myself. I, you know, I'll either forget to grid if I'm gritting myself, and then I'll just think I'm doing fine, and then later on I'll go home and I'll probably have to rip out stitches. But here, with it already gritted, and I had this piece, uh, I can work on it, and it will be easier for me to um, stitch and talk. So I will probably, again, do the typewriter method. I didn't grab every single floss, but I did grab all the ones that'll take me across the top and down a little bit. And that's all I'm going to get done anyway. So so anyway, here's, here's some of the colors though. Pretty, pretty colors for along the top of that singing in the ring. So that is my plan with it. And I've got enough colors here that if I was lucky enough, I could get more than halfway across the top there. So, or even more. And you can see there's a lot of greens, pinks, light greens, things like that. So that's that's what I'm going to be doing as far as the stitching part of it. So that's my new start for Thursday at StitchCon. I'm going to put this stuff away. On Friday, I'll be doing another new start. And um, Friday will be the 50th anniversary of uh, Disneyland's Electric Light Parade on June 17th. So Brenda Hamwork Maniac and I are starting a cell. And I've got to get got to show you the picture here before I show you my fabric. And it's a mandala. And it's going to be so fun. This is done in beads um, and floss. And just lights up the whole anniversary of the elect Disney's Electric Light Parade. So we are just so excited about this. Um, we'll probably start on a motif. Both of us were talking about that last night at our group meetup. And, uh, you know, we'll probably do that. We're going to bring our beads along um, and see what we can get accomplished for the 50th anniversary birthday during StitchCon. Um, if anybody wants to join us, both for the mini uh, Singing in the Rain with Amy and I, or for the Electric Light Parade uh, with Brenda and I, feel free um, to do it because the more the merrier. It's just going to be fun. So this is just a fun, fun piece. So we were, we're getting all ready with it and uh, getting all of our, our stuff together, our beads and our and uh, floss tags 
other things. So um, I'll be showing you some of the stuff either there or afterwards that we got together and we're, we kind of made it up all Disney. So it's just going to be lots of fun. We're really excited. We got matching t-shirts and um, matching bags and little bags to put things in it. <laughs> we're just going all out. So it's, but it's going to be fun. So that'll take up two days of StitchCon right there. So the third day, I, I haven't totally decided, but, um, you know, I've got some ideas in my mind. I'll probably bring my Home in the Garden, Pandemic, um, the Under the Sea, um, Sal, that uh, Frosted Pumpkin's doing. That's some of my ideas because it needs to be worked on. I'm not even going to take it out of here, but as you can see, that's my Under the Sea Sal in this cute little turtle bag. Um, I'll probably bring this along because I want to get this done. It, the new uh, the new monthly mystery part always comes out on the 25th of the month. So that way, if I bring this to StitchCon and get the little bit done down here, which has to be done, then I'll be ready for, for the new part when it comes out, when I get home. And um, even though I don't have what this picture is, this is going to be like a treasure chest and coral and that kind of stuff. And I've got a little bit of it done. So I think I'll probably bring that along and my home in the garden, work on the uh, borders because I can work on the borders and the other things without actually having to pay a lot of attention because I've got that border pretty much memorized now. So those are the ideas probably for Saturday. Um, after StitchCon, let's see. I probably, oh, I've got one more new start after StitchCon. I thought I had a lot of starts this month, but they were ones I really wanted to do and really, really was excited about doing them. And, and I've done well so far, so we'll see how I do with the two starts at StitchCon. My last new start will also be a full coverage, and it is going to be, pull out a picture again, it's going to be um, the montage series that I started out with um, Sarah Stitching Mommy. We started out with um, Winter Montage by Janet Stever, Pain-Free Crafts. This is a summer montage. And so we are going to start this on the first day of summer, June 21st, when I get back from StitchCon. And um, generally, Sarah and I both work on it three days. So um, that's my plan. I want to get a good start on this rose. I mean, when I say a good start, I am not planning on doing, I'm going to do typewriter methods some, but I'm also going to be moving down and uh, pulling out those like um, curves in the rows. So so the rose kind of looks like a rose and starts popping out. So it'll be some, some um, typewriter and some cross country, mini cross country, because I'm just going to work right here. So that's my plan for the three days that I work work on that. Um, another beautiful, beautiful pattern. When we get done with this one, um, we've got one more. We have fall. And uh, let me see. I think I've got fall in here. I may not. I was kind of getting... Nope. Doesn't look like it. I, I was kind of buying them as I, as I go because of trying to save some money. So uh, I think I probably don't have the fall one yet. I'll buy it before we start fall. So that will be my last new start for the month of June. Um, it was fun, but I'm hoping that I could get to July and just, you know, go back and work on whips. Who knows, though? I might get excited about another new start. But for now, there's nothing that's grabbing me. Um, I'm also, oh, I did not mention here. I'll be using the same color fabric for my montage as I did for all the rest. It's like a moss green 25 count over one. Because it worked out good for the other two, and I thought, well, this way I can keep them all the same color. So that is what I forgot to, forgot to mention. I'll do that. Um, we're going to leave and go to the River House probably on that weekend, which will be around the 25th or so. And so um, at... At the house, my plan is bringing whatever yearly challenge, I mean, whatever projects I haven't gotten my goal met yet, which will be the yearly challenges I know because I may get up to four of my eight um, parts done, but I know I'm not going to get them all done before StitchCon or even right after I get home. 
So I'll be bringing those up, which will be Peace Band Sampler, Garden Prelude, my Mirabilia one with that fancy flowing dress, and also um, Prairie Life Sampler. I'll work on those, and then I'll also bring up Lace Maker because um, I have a goal every month to at least get a thousand stitches, if not more, on Lace Maker. So I'll be working on those when I'm up at the house, River House. So I think those are all of, that's all of my stitching. Let's see. Yes, that is all of my stitching. So I'm going to come back. I do have some um, lace that I worked on this week. Um, like I was telling you before, I was burned out for a couple weeks, but now I'm all excited again. And then I'm going to leave for StitchCon. Then I'll come back and I'll have to decide, well, am I going to bring some of my lace with me to the River House, which I'm sure I will because I've gotten excited about working on, on my lace again. So I'm going to Go over, get my stuff, and bring it back. So, the bobbin lace that I worked on this week was something that, if you've been following my lace work, I was working on quite a while ago. And um, so I picked it up again, and I'm working on it on Tuesday mornings with my lace group. This is a Torshawn sampler, lace sampler, excuse me. And um, each one of those little squares has different lace stitches in it that are done different ways. And then they're surrounded to make them look like a block with what is called gimp work, which is a thicker thread that surrounds the actual area you're working on. When you get done with this piece, it'll be this whole sampler done. I started up, actually, this is, um, the, this is the right side, and I'm working from the wrong side. Lace is usually worked from the wrong side, so when you're done, when you tie your threads off, um, you can hide your knots better. That way you turn it over, and the, you know, the correct side, the finished side, is on the other side. So it's going to look opposite from what I'm showing you. But we started here, so really it's like starting here. We started here on our piece. I finished this one. I finished this one, and now I'm going to just barely be starting this. Yesterday in my class, and my group, I finished up this last lower part of the second sampler block. This one was really hard to show you before because um, you could not see. There were, it's dense with pins. It's different than uh, the other pieces I work on. But now you'll be able to see some of it because when you get done with a certain part of lace on, on some of these patterns, especially this kind of lace, you can um, remove the pins from where you were working there and reuse them for there. So you don't have to get new pins. You can pull the pins out of that because it's already set into, into its pattern. It won't get messed up any. You just don't remove the outside stitches because then it would pull it and, and scrunch it up. You leave the very outside pins in it to keep it there. But the inside pins, you can remove all of them. I don't know if that makes much sense. I'm not. Sometimes I, I think I should do a video just on lace making and explain all that stuff in more depth as if I have time to do that, but I'll try sometime. Anyway, that's what, that's what I did with this. So when I hold it up, you, I'll show you that you can actually see this very first block some because I pulled out the pins as I was working along. This is on a very big pillow because this is a really big sampler. We'll see if the, we'll see if the bobbins stay where they're supposed to stay. And of course patterns are put on like a, a, a laminated, you know they're stuck onto a laminated thing so you can put push the pins in and so it's all glary when I try to show it. But I'm going to cover my face, bring it up, and see if you can actually see if I can make it go where you can actually see it, which it's not working. Okay. Well, I apologize for that. I'm going to have to just kind of show it to you farther back, and you're still not going to be able to see it that well. That's about the best I can show you. But you can see that I started pulling the pins out from that top block but only kept the pins around the corners and edges to keep the shape. And those pins I used for lower down here. So as I do that, I will just keep removing the pins from those top parts and just reusing them down below, which is good because then I'm not using so many pins. 
and in the process you will start seeing more of the sampler piece revealed. So. This is torchon lace and it is um, a French lace. It's usually the lace that most beginners start with. Um, though this piece here is not a beginner piece because all these stitches are actually quite difficult stitches within within each motif you know triangle thingy here they are not easy stitches so but torshan does have a lot of easy stitches so it's usually one started by by lace makers and any of you who haven't seen any of this before bobbin lace is lace worked on this this what we call a pillow. We call it a pillow. It's ethafoam or styrofoam um, that you cover with cloths. The pattern is pinned. You use wooden bobbins with a thread wound around them in pairs with the size thread that you need to use and you weave it. So it's a form of weaving off the loom. So that was my Torshawn um, sampler. And then I switched gears totally on Tuesday night, last Tuesday nights, and worked on the other piece that a lot of you just, I'm sure, wanted to see some more of. This is Milanese lace, and um, this is an Italian lace. They do a lot of color work with it now. It was originally done all in white, but um, new, newer modern designers, I mean, newer designers are using more modern techniques, which involves a lot of color. I started this L um, at a class at the beginning of the month of April. No, wait, May. Yeah, May 1st through 4th, I think it was. So um, after that, I got a little burned out after four straight days of 10 hour, four days of 10 hour, yeah, 10 hours each day about. So I put away my lace and didn't pick it up for a couple, three weeks. But now I'm excited about working on Mr. Alligan. Where I left off before, oh, I'm not going to undo my um, my cover cloth for this to show you my whole owl this time because the section I'm in makes it very difficult. Um, the bobbins are going to go all over the place and um, the threads will get tangled in the other, other pins. So until I get down and finish off a section, I can't show you what my whole owl looks like. And he is a different color than this owl, but at least you will get an idea of the stitches and everything. I opted to use um, blacks, grays, metallic silvers on mine. So you'll be able to see that with the little piece you see, but it's not, you won't be able to see the whole owl, not today. And I left off down right here. I had finished up this, this particular braid. It's called a braid and the braid is named Archway. I did turn this corner on his wing, worked up and started working on this part. And this part is also a braid, and I think it's called, oh man, I don't have the name with me, I'm sorry. It may be just be called braids because it almost is like braiding back and forth. But sections of these are called braids in and of themselves because each one of them has a different stitch, so. And this one was an archway stitch. So now I'm working on that one. So when I ended my class, I ended the archway here. Stupid. Leave him there. <laughs> I ended the archway braid right about there. And then I started down to the tip of his wing. Went around the other tip of his, you know, went around the other side up here. And now I'm doing this this braid right here, which is really pretty because if I can tip it just right, which again, there's la there's there's plastic sheeting on these patterns, and so it glares and it's harder to give you a good, you know, a good look at it. But that turning sideways there, you can kind of tell that um, that braid is is when it, when I move the threads around, it's bringing the silver over here and back over there and it's bringing the the gray over there to over there and then the black just weaves through it i use the black as the weaver so so that's what i got accomplished on that which is pretty good not sure how much more i'm going to work on it you know before i because i'm getting ready already for stitch gun right now but 
I was happy to pick it up, pick it up and work on it. So, so that's my lace for for the last two weeks. And before I end, of course, I'm going to read you something out of the Daily Gratitude book that I have. And this says, those who contemplate the beauty of the earth find reserves of strength that will endure as long as life lasts. And that's by Rachel Carson. As we get the opportunity to see beauty out there as we travel or um, even in our own backyard, it, it carries on. It endures. We can refer to it when we're having difficult times or when we just are wondering about this crazy world and whether people are going to destroy each other or whatever else. We can, we can look and see the enduring beauty of the world around us and know that that will give us some hope, some connection. So, so that's what I want to leave you with. And um, I hope to see you in anywhere from two to three weeks, probably. Uh, probably more likely when I'm up at the house, River House, because I think we'll be a little rushed after I get back from the retreat. Um, if I do, I may do it from down by the river if the weather's good, which it should be by now. So anyway, remember to find the beauty in every day, wherever you're at. It's there. You'll find it. So um, take care, everybody. Love you, and I'll see you in a few weeks. Bye.